Welcome to my fifth video about BigQuery for marketers. I decided to continue this topic as many of you guys suggested me to do. So in this video, I will explain to you the most useful standard SQL functions that you can use in Google BigQuery as a digital marketer. If you're not familiar with Google BigQuery at all, please see my other videos where I cover the basics. Hello there, welcome to Ads Courses. If you're looking for a channel with more advanced and unique PPC and web analytics tricks and strategies, you're in the right place. If you want to support this channel, subscribe and share it. Okay, now let's dive in. Okay guys, so today I will show you some examples of standard SQL functions that you can use in Google BigQuery. Keep in mind that these are standard SQL functions, so you can't use them with legacy SQL in BigQuery. I think I covered this topic of legacy SQL in one of my previous videos about BigQuery. So these are standard SQL, and that means that you can also use them outside of BigQuery, right? As a standard SQL functions. Okay, so there is a great and complex documentations from Google Cloud uh, when it comes to expressions, functions, and operators in standard SQL. And I will post a link to this documentation in the description of this video. And this is actually one of the best resources if you want to actually explore standard SQL functions because there are hundreds of them here or even more. And uh, of course, I won't be able to cover all of them here in this video. And it wouldn't make actually any sense to do it even in, you know, several videos. You most likely will only use, you know, several of these functions while you work. Uh, but you have all of them in here with examples, with descriptions, how to use them, and you can search them in here, right? So you have mathematical functions, right? Power, uh, greatest, there are navigation functions, there are cast functions, string functions, you know, timestamp, date functions, etc. Uh, a lot of functions actually are available and, you know, they are described very good in here in this documentation. So if you want to actually explore SQL and BigQuery in general, you know, you need to actually spend some time with it, right? You need to practice. You, you won't be able to do all of that and by watching a video. You need to actually experience this on your own. And you can find anything well, while you struggle, when you want to do something, you can find, you know, every function in here. In this video, I will focus on some basic and more interesting functions that you may, you know, actually want to use as a digital marketer, for example. But not only, actually. If you want to explore more, there is this documentation in here. Okay, so we will start with cast function. And you can find them in here in the documentation. This is like the cast function. And by casting, you actually, you know, convert the expression to a different type. So, for example, you can convert string into a date, right? You can convert string into uh, something else, right? Time, numeric into a string, etc. So, very useful, actually, very useful functions. And I have a <clears throat> very simple example of cast function in here. Uh, we will use a public data set from Google BigQuery. And what this actually does is, you know, we've in this public data set, right? Let me just show you. We've got start time, right? So this column name start time, and this is a date time column. And we want to convert this start time column data into a date. So from date time to a date, because if we would preview this data, we would see that this is a right a time date time, right? So we've got year, month, day, and, you know, hour, minute, and seconds. And we don't need our minute and seconds. We just want the date. So we use the cast function. So it's cast, start time. So this is a column name that we want to convert from as date because we want to convert it to date and name it as start date. This is just a name. You can, you know, name it differently. It doesn't matter. And just additionally count, you know, distinct bike IDs as number of bikes, you know, just to, for it to make sense. It's group by start date, order by number of bikes. And when we run this function, you will see this start time column is converted into start date and it's only dates in here. Okay. Another example is, you know, uh, terminal name. There is a terminal name in this table and it should be somewhere in here. Yeah, it's here. So this is a number, right? So let's run this function. Okay, and what it does actually, it removes zeros from the start. 
as you can see, there are no numbers, no IDs where, you know, it starts with a zero or, you know, several zeros. It just removes the zeros. Uh, so we cast terminal name as int64. This, you know, this is a function. It removes the, you know, it tells to, to remove the zeros. And that's it. And then you have your results here. Okay, and another example, we will cast install date, which is a date, you know, as string. So it will be just a string of characters. Normally it's a, a date, but now it's a string, just a string. So casting is very important. You can modify the columns and change the types of data to different types. Uh, sometimes it's very useful and actually very easy to, to use. Okay, another function that I want to show you are string functions. Okay, so I have a query actually prepared for this, so I will just copy it in here. Okay, so let's just move it down to see the whole query. Okay, so these are just the examples of the string functions that I, <clears throat> I want to show you. Uh, and we will work on the name column, right? Because if we would go into this data set, we will see this column name, which is a string, of course, right? It's a string. Okay, it's the given name of a person at birth. I will just run one by one and explain you what the actual function does, right? So it's the first one, it's length name as name length. So it will return the length of the string in characters, you know, how many characters this name has. Another one is lower the name. So it will be lower, it will, be, you know, this new column, because we will create a new column, will be named lower name. So it converts to a lower case. Upper you know, the other way around, it converts to uppercase, trim name as trim name, example one, because we have two examples of this function. So it will trim leading and training white spaces. So we can remove the white spaces, right, from the beginning or from the end of the parameter, right? Uh, but you can also use trim function to actually remove a certain character. In this example, we will remove this character when it's showing at, as a first character or as a last character, right? So uh, there will be no examples that starts on this character. It could be like A, any other character. It could be also several characters at once. So it won't show, it will trim the parameters from starting at AD or ending like on AD, okay? Okay, we've got concat, which is like concatenate. So we can, you know, like merge different columns or merge different columns with you know certain characters and different columns. So for example, here we will create a new column named concat example one, which will be merge of name column separated by this, what we have here, right? And it will add gender. I will show you how it looks. Maybe I'll run this query actually and show you how it looks exactly. Okay, so we've got this concat example one. So this one, this is it, right? So we've got Helen and gender F. So it's like Helen, female, you know, Mary, female, right? Et cetera, et cetera. Just to go back and show you trimming this, this trimmed name uh, two. So this is like this one. So it's like, right, it trims these characters. If they, you know, exist as, as the first characters or less. Okay, uh, you can see other ones like uppercase, you know, lowercase, you know, the name length, the number of characters of a name are in here. Okay, another one is a second example of concatenate concat functions where we will, you know, concatenate name plus this sign and gender. So it's just another example here, right? And sorry, also state. So it's like Helen, female, Miami, right? Another example how you can use this. Okay, now we've got four examples of subtract, right? It just takes everything from the second position onwards in this example. So this column here, it was Helen, right? As you can see here. But it's starting to, to give you results from the second character, right? Starting from second. So it'll be Ellen, right? Because we just removed this first one and we start from, from the second one and so on and so on. Uh, the second example of subtract is same name. We start from the second one and we will only take three characters starting from the second one. So it will be Ella, right, in this example, or like this in here, because we just take from the second one, one, two, and three, right? We put it in here, okay? Another example, the same, but we just take from the second uh, character, 
five characters. Okay. In this example, if the position is negative, and here we, we've got a negative position, the function counts from the end of the value with minus one indicating the last character. So we've got this in here. Okay, another one is replace. We will replace A in name column with, you know, Chris, for example, right? It could be, you know, Carol, whatever. Uh, and we will create this column with it. And it's in here. Right, so we've got like Chris in here, some different stuff. Doesn't actually matter. It's just example how it works. It's not a business, you know, valuable <laughs> query actually. Okay, so we've got cast in here. So we will you know, cast as date, and we will first concatenate the uh, year as string uh, and add these values first. So first of all, we've got only in year column we've got only year it was if we would go to the year column it would be only this right we wouldn't have any months or dates uh, but we want to cast this as a string so it will be only a string it won't be a um, date right uh, and we will concatenate these values after the year after the year which is a string right because we concaten uh, casted it as a string so it will just simply add these in here so that it will look like this you will have you know months and days statically right zero one zero one and cast this as date later right at the end so it will be a date format you know and name it as date <clears throat> so what we simply did here is you know we added month and day we made it a string we added you know month and date and we casted this as date Okay, another examples will be date and time functions, time stamp functions, etc. Because in SQL, the format could be a date, could be a time, a timestamp, and date time. Just to show you what I mean, you can find this in the documentation, of course. Okay, a date, there is a, an example here, right? This is a date. So we've got a year, a month, and a day. Okay, so we've got a time format and type right data type and time is just simply you know an hour minutes seconds right so this is a time format we also got timestamp functions and timestamp is simply you know combination of date and time so we've got date you know year month day and we've got time hour minutes and seconds and we've got also a date time and date time is a little bit different in format when it comes to timestamp so it looks like this right Similar, but different, okay? And I've got this, you know, simple function prepared here. And this section in here, it will just simply put this, you know, date or time or time stamp and, and date time, current. Okay, so when we will run this, it's in here. You've got a current date, so it's like today. If I would, you know, run this function tomorrow, it would be a different date. Current time, so if we would run this again, it would show a different time. A current time we've got a current timestamp and current date time right okay here i just want to <clears throat> show a start time column what's in there and it looks like this okay so it's a date time the start time is a date time when it comes to format and now there are some functions that i run in here for these so the first one is i want to cast start time as date and name it as start date okay so right now it's a date time. I want to convert it into a date uh, and name it start date. And it's in here. So it takes this start time, converts it into a date. So we don't have any, you know, hours, minutes, etc. Another one is it's date time add. So it will just add five days from the current start time. And, you know, we just name it like this. So it's this one. So it adds this uh, five days from the start time. Okay, another one is uh, date time different. So it will show me the difference between stop time and start time, right? In minutes. So how many minutes is between stop time and start time? And it's in here in minutes, right? 6, 22, etc. We've got the same, but show them in seconds. So we've got seconds in here, the difference, and we've got hours. Sometimes it's zero, sometimes one. Okay, so these are like very common date time functions. Okay, so this was like an introduction to a standard SQL function because there are 
hundreds of them in uh, that are available and you just need to actually look into this documentation find whatever you want if you want to do something you can use the search function here and search for your problems and it could show you the actual function that you can use for this particular goal that you want to accomplish right and i suggest to simply you know run through them now you know the the most important the easy to want to use but there are many many different functions like numbering functions like i said mathematical functions navigation functions aggregation functions you know string functions like we covered you know more advanced functions also here are available operators conditional expressions so a lot of them you won't have to use in my opinion like 90 percent of them so you will most likely only use 10 percent of them but they are all in here with pretty good descriptions and examples i hope that this video was useful for you guys i will continue this topic series in the next video so stay tuned if you want to support this channel simply hit the subscribe button that's all for today see you in my next videos